Hello everybody, my name is ASFOM, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 as Russia. Let's continue on for we last left off. So Ukraine is getting destroyed. The politics is getting destroyed. Poland is kind of, and you know, it's surviving. Over here, uh, just ignore it forever because who, who cares? This does not matter to me at all. We're trying to intervene right now in the Middle East. Mostly because I want to see if I can get anything at all. Uh, reinforcement rate combat width goes down. Yeah, to spend the points. I'm not spending the points on anything else. Like, I don't have tanks. I mean, I guess I can change my divisions here, but that doesn't matter to me at all. I don't want to, I don't want to change anything. I don't have one. I, I'm still like 119,000 short. 17,000 rifles still short for all of our infantry units. Yeah, you can just hold off for a second. You're still pushing in like really, really well. Apparently there are multiple combats, which is again not actually accurate, but can you actually move into this territory? The answer is no. You stop for a second. Hold position. So yeah, reinforce these armies. That's great. You stop that because it's not. It's really not working out well for you. And for the most part, things seem to be doing pretty well. Let's see if we can attack into here. You're trying to attack into there. Not with like, a ton of success, but, you know, it looks like without much failure either. And then, yeah, as soon as these guys meet up, they can just, you know, rejoin this main front line. Stop attacking that city. Attack? No, stop. I pause. Attack here. Because that Ukrainian troop's like a lot weaker. And because he's a lot weaker, we can probably actually surround this like little pocket. Okay, let's see if we can attack into you. Yeah, you come down here. Try to reinforce these lines. And these Germans are all getting pushed out. Fantastic. Okay, so that, that, that battle is definitely going to be one in our favor. We are very close to Riga, and taking over Riga is going to basically be these guys capitulating. Wonderful news. Can we go to War Economy yet? Partial mobilization. War Economy is 200. I mean, no, this costs 100, 100, so it doesn't really make a difference. It's actually amazing that we're, we're only on partial. I mean, you're also on partial as well. Every, actually, everybody's on partial. Except for Britain and... No, really, just Britain. They're the only ones who are not. Okay, actually, I think you guys can stop attacking for now. Put you back on the regular battle plans. Okay, one if we, uh, Russian infantry division did get completely surrounded, which kind of sucks for them, but... Kind of spread out. Blue army, you're actually not, you're not doing fantastic. I'm going to set you back to some regular battle plans. Continue any battles you're currently doing, but. Okay, you can actually hold. You can stop for now. That's a Belarusian troop, so I don't really care what they're doing. Like, we are just doing actually fantastic. How many troops do you have? Again, still significantly less than all of your allies, so... I don't know what the big problem is. You think you can just abandon this front line? You think the AI can really deal with... And how the AI is definitely going to lose there. Can I get an auto-aggression pack with anybody here? No, they just don't like me. I can improve relations, but... I don't even know if the, Does an auto-aggression pack have anything to do with focuses? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know if the... Yeah, yeah, you just stop attacking for now. Take over here. If we can, again, if we take over Riga, if we can take over Kovno, we can probably get these guys to capitulate relatively quickly. 
Like, do you guys like me? You don't. That's probably because you're a social democrat. Everybody else still is pretty fond of me, and that's A-OK. -okay. You can probably kill that one German infantry quite easily. Again, we've only lost 24,000 men to the to the Germans. And we have killed 210,000 Germans. Apparently, Italy is actually doing the most in the war. How is that possible? I mean, actually, overall, we're doing the most. Because we're the only one who's actually captured any kind of victory conditions. I mean, you can see, you see the French are punching a little bit of a hole through into Alsace-Lorraine. Good for them. How are you guys all doing? You, you actually don't have a battle plan anymore. Your offensive line is basically going to be push this way. I don't know why it's such a weird arrow like that, but sure. Whatever you feel is right. You do that. Yes, yeah, you guys all now redeploy. You go try to see... No, okay, don't attack anybody. Let's see if you can get to, like, a city so that you can have some supplies. I don't have high hopes for you, but... It is theoretically possible. Okay, Rika actually is, like, extremely heavily defended at the moment. Yeah, so you guys just uh, hang out for the time being. How many troops does Ukraine have? They have 20 to 60 divisions. 5 to 6. Not a lot. These are actually mostly like Lithuanian troops. Actually, there's a lot of Polish troops here as well. They're making 100 rifles a day. I mean, again, it's not like a huge impact. We have a surplus of motorized. So make even more rifles. That's really the only thing I can say is just make even more rifles than we were before. Resistance to occupation. Ah, eh, whatever. I'm sure it's fine. How long until this one German troop leaves? Uh, one day, six hours. Maybe we can do another attack. The fall of Lisbon. Not a huge surprise. Did you see what was going on over there? It was an actual disaster. And how come nobody right now feels confident attacking? Do they think there's a superior enemy? They don't. German Air Force is massive compared to our tiny ass uh, army. Also, I have not recruited any of these chief of staffs or anything like that, or any companies. Portugal is capitulated. Yeah, I'm, again, not entirely surprised by that. We're so worth all of you. I'm surprised that you're not giving military access to... Oh, no, you are giving military access to, um... The Germans. Again, I really wish I could just offer them peace. Because... Like, I don't want to be at war with these guys. I... You know, in hindsight, I should have just stayed out of the war. Mongolian Tibet could have just dealt with that on their own forever. And I would never would have had to think about it ever again. You just don't... You just don't defend yourself. You'll probably be, like, the first major casualty of the entirety of the war. Which, all things considered, is not actually, like, that big of a deal. Okay, so they're trying to attack us into us again. See if we can make some progress here. We can't force attack. You know what? Attack extremely aggressively. And force attack across the entirety of the line. We're going to take probably like a lot of casualties here, but if we can just get some of these guys to capitulate, that's going to be really good for us. Why is it only six divisions? Like the entire army is supposed to be here. Again, be extremely aggressive in your attacks. These cities should fall relatively soon. This, this army is going to die. These guys up here are definitely going to die. If we can actually get the surround here. Which doesn't look like we're going to do, sadly. Yeah, troops are still retreating out. But, you know, if we can get any encirclement whatsoever. And, uh, okay. How about two divisions? I mean, that's not a ton. Again, not a ton, but two divisions is better than zero divisions. Okay, 
you just defend against that guy. You keep advancing this direction. If we can surround Riga, that'd be pretty good for us. So, you know, they're actually over combat with, so they are getting a little bit of a penalty. 25% actually, that's a pretty significant penalty. All things considered. It looks like the French are doing quite well against the Germans in the in the West. You know, so we'll see how this goes. Again, we have 40% war support. Or 40% uh, war participation, which is pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good for us. Try to push everywhere, so we, uh, we're no longer force attacking, which kind of sucks. Try to reinforce over there. You re reinforce into that fight. What territory is this? Oh, that's part of Ukraine, okay. We are not getting imports from you anymore, so I guess we're just going to cancel that. Get more from the Japanese. Thank you. Japan, like, we're friends, right? No, they hate me even more now. They have claimed our territory. Have they? What territory of ours have they claimed? Answers, I have no clue. Unless it's saying that I'm claiming territory that they own. I'm, I'm claiming the north of the island, okay. So that's apparently a negative 20 opinion modifier. Again, how many men have I lost? 125,000. Germany has finally just eked out the NPA. Which, if anything, really just shows that I was terrible against the NPA. Then that the, um... Then that the Germans are strong. Push in against all fronts. Anybody close to capitulating? Ukraine, Lithuania, and the UBD are all looking, you know, like they want to. I wonder if we can do, like, a naval invasion from here to, uh, this city. Probably not. How strong is the German Navy? Uh, a lot. A lot of people and a lot of ships. Political power goes up. We just gained somebody. How long for the Middle East thing to be done? Four more days. Okay, so we are getting attacked. Push into you. Again, if we get a full surround on Riga, they're going to take a negative 50% penalty. At least I think so. It's kind of hard to tell when there's like a... When there's like an ocean tile. Whether or not it counts as being actually uh, completely surrounded or not. Oh, fantastic. We are making such quick work of everybody, except for the Chinese, but don't... Just ignore them. Look, you are extremely close to being within our grasp. Okay, we're at 6% against you. You are definitely not going to make any progress here, so you march to that province. I mean, sure, if you want to keep attacking, whatever. I'm not going to stop you at this point. So we're at 60% here. We're at 52 became uh, how much do we need? We need 61 for a full force attack. The Middle East direction. So we can ask for Greater Armenia. We'll see if they say yes. I might, I might not even like try to push. Oh, they've, oh, Austria's actually landed down here. And Persia has one troop on our border. So we'll see if the Austrians can actually make progress. I'm kind of surprised, like, I'm surprised there's no Balkan direction. Canada, America, it's not a fact with Ukraine, Japan. Yeah, okay, no, that, that works out just fine for us then. We need more waters. 
Secure the Straits of Turkey. Ask for Greater Armenia. Well, we'll see if they say yes. If they say yes, then we might try to push our claims even further. I don't know why this is a different front entirely. Look at that. There we go. Just stretch that out like that. There we go. Everything's a lot simpler. You just try to attack. See if you can get any actual progress done. We're at 76%. We're almost ready for another force attack. If we can again, if we can take over any country, that's gonna be good. Wait, I mean, we are taking some big casualties down here in Ukraine. Which is not fantastic. Poland, Lithuania, Ukraine's done some pretty strong work against us, but the numbers don't lie. I mean, I mean, we actually can't see, um... How's the Entente war against them going? 400,000 men. So yeah, I mean, overall... Well, how's this war going down here? Etri is gonna lose, okay. Somalia might still win. I mean, they haven't really made any progress against them, so it's a, maybe a bit hard to tell, but... It seems like it's pretty straightforward, and who's going to actually win that engagement? Okay, we need to attack these guys just to make sure they do not reinforce the capital. We've almost gotten a nice round on Riga. Kiev is also pretty close to being within striking distance. Which is great news. This front line also should extend one province over. Yes, thank you for making all of our dreams come true. Yes, just keep on pushing forward. Literally never stop attacking. Look at that. Like four four straight arrows straight into uh, Ukraine itself. Weirdly enough, they don't actually want to cross the river into uh, Bessarabia. Oh, but that's okay. The center of the line, basically purple here, their objective is really just to hold down the fort. See if we can actually maybe get something done here. These attacks are not helping us out at all, but it could be worse. We got three more days. Three more days to see what Armenia is going to do, or what the, I guess the Ottomans are going to do in response to Armenia. They might just say yes. Honestly, there's a good chance they're going to say no, but there's not an impossible chance that they'll not say yes. I mean, they're, they're putting troops on our border, so, you know. They're a bit worried. We'll see what they say. Are they going to give me Greater Armenia? I don't know yet. We're going to ignore all this. We can't do that because we're not a piece of Lithuania. Or Ruthenia. Okay, so we don't even bypass it? I really thought we would just bypass it, but okay. Claim Bessarabia, build Vessel Port. We don't own Crimea, apparently. We control it, we don't own it. Okay. So, overall, I mean, there's still a bunch of other stuff in here, too, that we could be looking at. War support, but we're already at 100%. What do you guys do? Um, create a new bioxy or reinstitute these guys. Liberalize the economy, research slot. Free civilian factories, war program construction, educate the masses. A free research slot actually is pretty good. Let's create a new bureaucracy, 35 days. 
in the middle of World War II. Let's just make a new Bioxy. What could be the harm? But I do think it's going to be a good time to end this episode. Thanks for watching. My name is Anthem. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. If not enjoyed, you can always thumb down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.